the point of the quotas aren't that they're going to be there forever. The, the idea would but be... But they are there forever. But they're subsidizing technology yeah. until it gets more efficient. And when all of those tariffs are reduced, the things that we're supposed to encourage and jumpstart an industry, the industry collapses. Solar industry in Germany and in Spain is an utter collapse because of the, remo the projected removal of feed-in tariffs because these are simply not economical sources of energy. They'll be there as long as you subsidize them. And when you take the subsidies away, they will go away. The subsidy may be well-intentioned to try to get the industry to get going on its own, but that's usually not the way things work. The theory is great, but the reality just continues to be the opposite. Every energy source is subsidized, right? If oil is subsidized because we're sending people off to war. Mm -hmm. You know, the level of the subsidies are substantially lower for established industries than they are for things like solar and wind. George Monbiot, who writes in The Guardian, he has recently come out very strongly in support of nuclear power because of what happened to Fukushima Daiichi, how it survived the earthquake, and the overall effect has been nothing compared to the death and the loss of life from the tsunami. Well, he mentioned in an article he wrote yesterday that he talked to Caroline Lucas, the head of the Green Party in the UK, and he asked her why she would support <coughs> subsidies on solar and wind. She goes, I oppose subsidies for nuclear, but I support them for solar and wind because nuclear is an established industry and solar and wind are still developing industries and they need public support in order to flourish. And so George, being a very smart guy, said, well, will you support research into thorium reactors, which could provide a much safer and cheaper means of producing nuclear power? No, because thorium reactors are not a proven technology. On the individual level, we are seeing a lot of people change their minds. But at the organizational level, we're not seeing any change. You know, the people who run the environmentalist organizations. And that's unfortunate. Have you had a one-on-one -on -one where you are talking to someone and they, they get this? On several occasions. I've even had one-on-ones with people in environmentalist organizations where they get this. It's tough for people who are further up the food chain in these organizations to come out and make public policy statements. A lot of people get it one-on-one, -on -one, but they're afraid to be the first one to stand up and say, rah, 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 let's go do this. It's a lot easier when you feel like everybody else is behind you.